The Pittsburgh Steelers certainly have made a lot of moves in free agency already, and it's clear they're going to have a strong plan for the NFL draft. But there's still a blatant need, and it's not just the strong safety position when you're talking about Tyron Matthew or getting one in the NFL draft. It's the need for another star player in the secondary, maybe not even just for this year, but a person who will become that for the years moving forward. I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast. We're going to talk about that need, how it can get addressed, the top free agents left on the market, and the latest Mock Draft Monday winner of which of our listeners had the best mock draft throughout this weekend. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video. Hit the subscribe button to our YouTube channel to get all of our daily content, Monday through Friday, as well as our daily uh, breaking news updates that we do, our breaking news updates when we do them. This episode today is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Again, Steelers offseason. As you can see, my background's a bit different. I'm on the road right now. So this is truly candid. Chris Carter coming off of a trip right now, giving y'all some Steelers talk. But we're going to have a fun talk today because I do think it's important to address the overall need. And you guys have heard me talk for weeks about how they needed to get either a star safety or a star cornerback in this free agency period. They kept the Keller Witherspoon. They added Levi Wallace solid their cornerback room is solid with cam sutton arthur mallett's been brought back and they get they get to see if they can add to that in the nfl draft the safety room not as solid right now because there's a big hole at the starting at the starting strong safety position now i know some fans think well they just signed carl joseph carl joseph is purely a practice squad guy who they hope to develop into a depth guy on the roster he's not the answer at strong safety despite some people in our youtube comment section who thought so but i want to point out that even though we're talking about Tyron Matthew, the honey badger, and whether or not he'll pick Pittsburgh, and who knows, he might Pittsburgh pick Pittsburgh by the time this show, or he might pick someone else by the time this show airs. But the bottom line is, even if he doesn't, there's even if he does, the Steelers need to make sure that there is a plan to have a, another star factor in their secondary moving forward. As I've talked all along, this team that's going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers this year and probably for a few years after, even if they find their quarterback of their dreams in in next year's NFL draft, because, again, I don't think that guy's in this draft. But if they say they're on that path, they need this defense to be elite, not good, not kind of great, elite. And in today's NFL, you need elite guys in your secondary who are ball hawking safeties and or great cornerbacks who can lock down to lock down wide receivers and make sure that the that quarterbacks don't have easy passing windows to their wide receivers. So I say all that to say, you're looking at, at the Steelers situation right now, Akella Witherspoon, a solid starter right now, but you'd hope that he'd be more of a cornerback two option, you know, in, in your system. Levi Wallace basically is a cornerback two option. Cam Sutton could be that cornerback two option or could be your starter in the slot. But I truly think the Steelers need to look at this at this opportunity they have right now and say, look, even if Tyron Matthew doesn't come into play, the secondary should be a primary focus in this NFL draft. And I know there's a lot of people out there that want a wide receiver. They want a defensive tackle. And I'm not saying that they wouldn't pick those in the first round or shouldn't pick those in the first round. But on their big board, there needs to be a focus to find a guy who's going to help create turnovers, help eliminate guys, you know, you know, potential receivers and targets down deep down the field those type of guys would be very valuable to what this defense is building moving forward remember yes cam hayward stefan to it well cam hayward's in, in his 30s stefan to it's getting up get, getting up there there are guys that are getting older but with players like devin bush who you hope gets reformed miles jack who uh is in his is, is still in his mid-20s make fitzpatrick who's in his, his, his mid-20s if you bring back terrell edmonds he'd be in his in his mid-20s you have a lot of guys who are young, athletic. You still have T.J. Watt, Alex Highsmith, still still very young. Um, you have a lot of potential for that group, that that core, to continue to be part of something great moving forward. But 
you need another star player in that secondary to make things 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 right. And a star player may not be a person who's an interception machine. Like Ike Taylor wasn't considered a superstar in the NFL. I don't think he ever got a Pro Bowl in the NFL. But Ike Taylor was a huge piece to what the Steelers did in their two Super Bowl wins in the 2000s. And really what you saw when, when he got out there, he was a lockdown cornerback. And funny enough, I think that plays into what the Steelers are looking, I need to be looking for right now. Ike Taylor was the ultimate nightmare for uh for Chad Ochocinco slash Chad Johnson when he was with the Cincinnati Bengals. For all, for all, you know, you we can debate all we want about receivers and history. He is that guy was one of the greatest route runners we saw in the modern era of football. But whenever he came to town, Ike Taylor shut him down and that made a huge difference in the Steelers Bengals dynamics during that time it made so Carson Palmer whoever was quarterbacking the Bengals at, the, at that time it made sure that they couldn't just throw to their main guy who would just be open and he would kill other teams but he wouldn't kill the Pittsburgh Steelers if the Steelers can get an eraser on that kind of a level in the secondary that'd be great but I also think for, for what they're trying to do having that eraser who can also create turnovers would go a long way to making this team a Super Bowl bound team sooner rather than later i'm not saying this year but i am saying that if te this team does fix its offensive line Najee harris is a strong running force he puts he takes the pressure off the quarterback to make plays pat frymuth continues to develop deontay johnson chase claypool a receiver they draft this year or two receivers they draft this year they build an offense they won't be a top 10 offense but say they're number 15 they, they're number 16 they're number 14 they're around that range and they're putting up points and so they're not kind of being dragged to victory the way that they were last year in Ben Roethlisberger's last season. That goes a long way with an elite defense. And that is, again, why I think the mold needs to be that. Now, you're probably sitting there, well, who can that be? Well, I, I look at I look at the NFL draft and I see there's a lot of different options for you to go. That's why I've been really big on the potential. If they can get a Derek Stingley and Andrew Booth, I just don't think Ahmad Sasconder is going to be there. He's gone top 10. And there's a chance that both of those cornerbacks are gone before they get there anyways. But those need to be guys that are on this team's big board to say, "Hey, we're going, we're we're going to, you know, run run up to the podium and add and add this guy." But I also don't think that the safety position should be overlooked because even if they bring back Terrell Edmonds or even if they get Tyron Matthew, having a three an athletic three safety look in today's NFL could really provide headaches to quarterbacks, and they need to not only take away uh, Jamar Chase, who is basically the Ocho Cinco that, that, that you're trying to take away in, the, in these day and times, but you're also trying to make life harder for Deshaun Watson, Joe Burrow, and Lamar Jackson. And when you have safeties who can roam, who can cover, who can intercept, and who can hit, that's going to provide a lot of problems. Now, I know some people out there might think that Kyle Hamilton's 40 time will make him fall. If it does, great, you, you, you get that. But let's not bank on that. But still, there are still at least three guys that I look at and I say, if the Steelers end up with one of these three guys in the first round, I think they did something great to add to their secondary. One, Daxton Hill of, Mich of Michigan as a safety. He's a guy who can play in the slot. Great range, great athleticism. You like what he brings to the table there. A little smaller there, little smaller there though, at six, at six foot, 190 pounds. But the two safeties who I think would fit really the mold the Steelers are looking for as a pair with Mika Fitzpatrick, because again, you're going for long-term longevity here. You're going for a guy that can sort of bring a different dynamic to the team. It's It'd be great to have two ball hawking free safeties, and that sounds like a great luxury. But what made Troy Polamalu and Ryan Clark or Troy Polamalu and Chris Hope was the fact that they brought different – what made those two pairs great was that they brought different dynamics to the Steelers' defense. And that's where Jaquan Brisker or Lewis Seam can come in. Of course, Jaquan Brisker of Penn State, good safety, good range, 6'1", 199, basically 200 pounds. That guy's, that guy's going to be able to hit. He's going to be able to move. He can fill that role as well. But Lewis Seam is the guy that I've had my, on, my guy on for a while not just because he played for Georgia's defense and they won the national title, but because the way that he hits, the way that he runs, has his 40, his 40 time, his athleticism, his six foot two length, that's the kind of athleticism and size and football instinct that you want in your secondary who could make himself a game changer. So again, that's where I'm at with, with, with where the Steelers' needs are right now as far as addressing the secondary and the defense, making things great. We, we're going to talk a little bit more about the free agency period because there are still free agents out there. I just think that there needs to be a certain plan in place to make sure the Steelers, and th this is what they're going to do. They're not going to overspend, but let's talk about who's still out there that the Steelers could swipe on a really good deal. First, I got to talk to you guys about Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product that I literally use every day. 
I started taking Athletic Greens product AG1 because I didn't have time to prepare all my meals and I ne- that I needed to get so I can get the proper nutrients every day. But with AG1, this great product from Athletic Greens, I've, been, I've had better gut health, more energy, an optimized immune system. And as an asthmatic, I've been breathing a lot easier. Now, I've been on AG1 for about a month and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy or it, it's not super heavy to gulp down. It's just a mild tropical taste. And it's something that I actually look forward to each morning. In fact, I have it right here. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to drink. With one delicious scoop of athletic greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, pro, pro, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focused, and aging, all the things. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look for up for your health. It costs less than $3 a day and contains less than one gram of sugar. And it supports better sleep quality. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs for your first purchase. All you have to do is visit their website, athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Now, we're also brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, scores, and that you're playing Vegas casino games. Head to the website today to use your or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action at BetOnline, where the game starts. And y'all know, when we do back-to-back ad reads, we keep it rolling, so no need to go cut to cut to a, 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 a another ad there. But let's look at the free agents that are available now. Big names, of course, that are still out there that everyone wants to talk about. Tyron Matthew, we've gone over it. Honey Badger's still out there. Odell Beckham Jr. injured, twenty nine. Cool, that ain't gonna happen. Stephon Gilmore also isn't going to happen. 31 years old. They've already signed. They've already kept the Keller Witherspoon and signed Levi Wallace. If the Steelers add a cornerback, it's going to be a cheap ad after the draft, or it's going to be in the NFL draft where they think they found their guy. Now there's other guys out there, Jadavion Clowney. I'm not so sure if Clowney's trying to be a backup at this point. And the Steelers right now, they don't want to go through another Melvin Ingram situation, which is why they got Avery, Gennard Gennard Avery from the Eagles, because he's a guy who was a fifth round pick, not really highly touted, really athletic, smaller, but could be a guy who brings a spark to the edge rusher depth, you know, on, on the depth chart. Now, other guys out there, funny enough, Melvin Ingram himself is still a free agent. Clay is Campbell. A little old. Uh, one guy that I think a lot of Steelers fans are talking about is Jarvis Landry. And I can see a way for Jarvis Landry to work out, particularly because they still the Steelers do need help at wide receiver right now. Juju Smith Schuster's gone, James Washington is gone, Ray Ray McLeod is gone. And not that all three of those were superstar players, but that was key depth for you last year. And you need that depth back. And Chase Claypool, however, whatever you think about him, if you think that he's going to be a guy that steps up and becomes a you know a star player for the Steelers, great. If you don't, either way, you still need to get him and Deontay Johnson some help. Jarvis Landry would be a veteran at 29 years old who could play that. But how expensive would he be? That's where I think the Steelers might might hold up on him. And I'm just if if he's if he's there in a few weeks. And, and even after the NFL draft and he's still looking for a team and the Steelers can bring him in for, you know, maybe five million a year. OK, different, different story. I'm not so sure that he he will. He's a slot receiver who could help out the team. But I think there's other options that you could get easier and cheaper in, in the NFL draft. Now, other guys out there, I think that they're done adding to the defensive interior defensive line, at least in free agency. They're hoping that Stephon Tua has been back. There's been reports that he's been back in the facility, Steelers facility. Um, they, of course, they have Cam Hayward. They re-signed Montrevious Adams. They like Chris Wormley. Um, and they and I really think that, that they're going to be looking at this, especially with Isaiah Loudermilk, as a group that's going to be solid free agency wise. Now, if Devontae Wyatt or Jordan Davis fall to them, they're absolutely drafting one of those guys, too. But I just think that there's not really a point to sign another aged 
defensive lineman to this group, unless you know Stephon Tewitt's not going to be back. If you know that, they need to be moving fast. Other guys out there, they're not sending J.C. Treader at 31 years old. They, I think they've made their interior offensive line moves for the free agency period, unless Treader's sitting there like going into training camp and for some reason no one's hot, us hiring him. That's uh, you know, that's something. But he's had injury issues, so that's a question. Another guy that's had injury issues, Will Fuller. I, on top of him getting suspended for PEDs, I think the Steelers are, tr- are, are trying to do that. Now, an interesting name I think that could uh, that they could be out there, Eric Fisher as a depth option if he can be signed for cheap. I don't think he will, but he's a guy that he's 31 years old. You just need a body on the offensive ta- at offensive tackle. After the draft, if you didn't get an offensive tackle to help with the depth there, he could be a guy that's like, you know what, you're sitting around, you're not doing th- nothing, he- he- sign this contract, won't be too costly, we'll, we'll be good there. Another guy to keep an eye on, Deshaun Elliott. I'm not as big of a Deshaun Elliott guy. He's a he is a tough guy, but he's de- he dealt with some injuries. I'd be a little, I'd be more more uh, inclined to go with a Terrell Edmonds in that situation because of Terrell Edmonds' availability and his already established chemistry with Minka Fitzpatrick. But I think the other thing that the Steelers need to keep an eye on right now is the running back position in free agency because right now, and they could address it in the draft, sure. But I think that they need to go with a guy who's a more sure bet at at, at free at, at running back right now to back up Najee Harris because you look at what this what the Steelers' offense is going to be. They need Najee Harris to be fresh and they need him to be able to run behind an offensive line, get you know get yards, and when he comes off, not lose the threat of a ground game. And right now, maybe Benny Snell and Anthony McFarland, maybe they step it up but they haven't shown that they're going to be those guys just yet. And that's where I think the Steelers, they can't sit there and hope and dream that those guys mature. They need to make a move to make sure that says, Hey, either you do mature or we got some guy who is mature. And that's a move that I think is underrated and not talked about enough about how this team's going to need to play next year, as far as running the football. Now, some of the free agent running backs out there, Sonny Michelle, 27, 27 years old, kind of along the lines that Kevin Colbert likes to sign guy off fresh off his rookie contract or close enough to it. He's rotational back. Wouldn't, wouldn't cost you too much, maybe $4 million a year. Something along those lines. Melvin Gordon, another guy, a veteran, 28 years old, a little bit older. Guys, they don't like them as much, but he'd be at least a veteran that you could bring in there. Now, uh, a guy who I think is perfect for this situation is Marlon Mack. He wouldn't cost you more than 2 or $3 million a year. You could sign him to a one-year deal. But Marlon Mack was once a guy who was thought to be potentially the, the guy at the in the running back room to say, like, hey, he could become a starter who's going to get a commander ground game Sunday. That didn't happen, of course. He was on the Colts. Jonathan Taylor came in, and he's a bad man. But Marlon Mack is sitting there. He's 26 years old. He has experience in the NFL. He's a good athlete, a good one cut back that I've, that I've seen. I liked him even in college. He could be a guy that you bring into camp and you say, hey, your job is to, is to either win this job or push Benny Snell and Anthony McFarlane to be good, become a solid number two. Because on top of being a good runner, you need someone who can be operate in the shotgun as the sidecar to Mitch Trubisky and say, hey, I'm going to be able to pick up whatever blitz comes my way. That's, again, a big factor here. Now, um, I, I think you know, some people might talk about Justin Jackson. Again, I think a big part of this needs to be you need guys who are going to be healthy. Unfortunately, Justin Jackson just ha- hasn't been for some, some time. So, I say all that to say there are definite free agent needs and definitely free agents out there. But if you're a Steelers fan, don't look at the big names at the top of the list. Comb through them, go through them and say, oh, wait, that guy, maybe not too expensive, closer to his first year, to his first year, uh, coming off his first contract in the NFL. Those are the guys that the Steelers might sign moving forward, in addition to, of course, the strong safety position, because they will make an addition there at at some point. But there's a lot of different things that they they could do in the free agency period. We'll keep you tracked, uh, we'll keep you locked on what they might do right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. But y'all know it's Monday, so what that means, it's Mock Draft Monday. So we're going to get to who won Mock Draft Monday right here on, on this show in just a minute. But first, I got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. Built Bar is, of course, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. And it's that time of the year. You're, you, it's April. You're feeling that the weather's starting to get a little bit nicer, but you're feeling like, man, I need to stick to these resolutions. And it's tough because you don't have all the time to eat right and to plan right. Well, Here's where Built Bar comes comes in hand for you because it's an actual resolution to help you keep eating light 
but tasting things that are awesome because Built Bars taste great. If you haven't tried the new Puffs flavors, you're missing out because these are the best tasting Built Bars around. Their Puffs flavors are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, marshmallowy, and they're not just a protein bar, they're a tasty treat. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate, just like all Built Bars are. And the Puffs flavors come in semi churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, all flavors that are so good. And you're going to be looking for your new favorite. And if you don't want to go for the Puffs flavors, that's, that's fine because there's plenty of Built Bar flavors for you to choose. And all, again, are covered in 100% real chocolate. They're low in calorie but high in protein. Replace the candy bars at your house with a Built Bar. The average Built Bar has 130 calories. Four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to the, to the candy bar that is usually around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. There's so many flavors to choose from, and it's, they're all going to be healthier options for you. You can get double chocolate, peanut butter brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, coconut, almond, salted caramel, all different flavors available. When you go to Built.com and order Built Bars to be delivered right to your door. And when you go to Built.com, be sure to use the promo code LOCKED15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order of Built Bars when you visit Built.com. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, and it's Mock Draft Monday time. Now, I'm not giving up giving a mock draft. I, I, get, I give you guys one last week. We're gonna we're gonna get make sure we always give our shout out. First of all, I want to thank everyone that participates in Mock Draft Monday. Whether you're on Twitter and you at me at Carter Critiques, whether you're on our Locked On Steelers Facebook group and you drop it in the post that I submit every Friday, it is appreciated when I get that many responses because you all make it very hard every week to pick through different strategies. Some weeks I'm thinking like, man, this pick with Devontae Wyatt works. Some weeks I'm thinking, man, this pick with Andrew Booth works. There's always interesting strategies and trades that I keep in mind, but I always try to tie in different looks to see different ideas and to get you guys different perspectives on different prospects and how they might fit into the Steelers roster and into their draft plans. Because also what has to happen here is getting the guys for the right values in the right rounds and addressing certain needs. So without any further ado, let's talk about this Mock Draft Monday week's winner. And that person is Robert Cernofsky. Congratulations. You won Mock Draft Monday with your picking up for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Robert did some interesting things here that I've been talking about on the show. He addressed several needs. He addressed safety, defensive tackle, wide receiver, center, running back, edge rusher, and wide receiver a second time. And added some really important pieces here that I thought were really cool. Now, his first pick, first round, Daxton Hill, safety out of Michigan. As I said before, Daxton Hill, good guy to have. He can help you in the slot right now. He can also help you as a safety for long term. He's more of a guy, in my opinion, He'll have that range. He can fly around if you bring back Terrell Edmonds or, or if you get Terrell Matthew. He's a guy that can play right now with them, and that's one of your three safety sets. You'd be athletic. You'd be moving all over the place, and you can disguise so many more things. I can't tell you when I'm looking at tape and I see the teams that have more athletic safeties out there, the things that they can do to disguise things because safeties can come up and help in the run a little bit more better than cornerbacks, and they can also drop back deep. They can also provide intermediate coverage. They can also run man coverage. That's something that I think the Steelers could have real value in over the next few years as they're trying to build that elite defense. If you have flexibility with your safety position with three different guys, it can really put quarterbacks in a conundrum because they could be saying, OK, there's two safeties that are looking high. That's going to that, and there's one safety floating here. I think it's just cover two. Oh, no, wait, they're going to cover three or cover one. And that that can usually lead to a mistake or even just a slight hesitation. And with T.J. Watt, Alex Highsmith, Stephon it maybe and Kim Hayward. Coming after you, the slightest hesitation could lead to more sacks, stripped fumbles, and fumble recoveries for this defense. Again, that's why I think the safety position is so important. That And Robert's second pick here, Travis Jones, defensive tackle out of UConn. Now, Travis Jones isn't Devontae Wyatt or J Jordan Davis, but he was the upstart at the Senior Bowl. And there's a lot of people that like him. And if I'm looking at defensive tackles this year, He's probably the last round of guys that I would say, oh, yeah, definitely get him. Now, there's Perry on Winfrey, and there's, I think there's a Lamarvin Neal. There's two guys that fit in there. I like Travis Jones a lot in the second round. It's a great fit if you don't get your guy in the first round. The question is, will he be there? Because there's a lot of teams that just that saw exactly what we saw and what the Steelers saw at the Senior Bowl. So there's a really good chance that he gets he gets picked up. But in this mock draft, Robert got him. So congratulations, Robert. You got you got that. Now, this was an interesting move here. Robert traded up in the third round 
to get to get an extra or traded up to get an extra pick in the in the third round here. And in doing so, he was able to get John Mechie the third out of Alabama. Of course, Mechie, he's not one of the prime Alabama wide receivers that come that seem to come out every year, but he is a speedster and he would add a different dynamic to the Steelers receiver room. And this is what they need to find. They need someone who can stretch the field to make it so that, in my opinion, Chase Claypool goes into the big slot. He's physical. He's over the middle. He's helping more blocking, you know, when it comes to the run into the interior of offensive formations. That's great. And then you can have Deontay Johnson be your wide receiver one. Let him get separation, separation, do all those important things. But you need a guy to stretch the field. And Chase Claypool can stretch the field. He has that speed. But you've seen him. He's not being the best combat catch guy further down the field. Maybe someday he'll prove that he can be that again because he looked like that in his in his rookie season. But John Mechie would be a good option to say, hey, this could this could work out on the outside. Let him fly down the field. Let him let him use that speed. I like this next pick at 84th overall, Alec Lindstrom, offensive center or center at out of Boston College. Now, Lindstrom, not of, of course, not Zion Johnson. That would be a guy who, if they got him, it would really put some interesting dynamics into the off, interior offensive line. But I think with the signing of James Daniels, with them bringing back Kevin Donson and Kendrick Green and those and, and those guys, and they also added Mason Cole. There's a lot of competition there already, and I think that they're not going to go high at center or guard uh, in this NFL draft unless all the prospects that they view are top 20 pick ready are gone. And I just think that Tyler Linderbaum, those guys, they're off the board in the early rounds. But in the middle rounds, I can see a Lindstrom working out. It's another guy that you add to the position. You can put, throw him into the fold. If he doesn't work out, oh, well, you have him for four years on your contract, and he can still compete to be part of your depth in the offensive line. But I think right now, until the Steelers can invest heavy in the offensive line in the first round, they're going to need to try to find guys to fight, put as much competition in training camp to say, okay, what we're doing is we don't may not have a David DeCastro or Marquise Pouncey were first round picks, but we do have a bunch of guys who are nasty, who are competitive and want a job. And sometimes you can create you can find some diamonds when you put those types of uh, type of competitions up for, for your team. So I think that's an interesting pick. Rounding things out here in the sixth in the sixth round, sincere McCormick running back out of uh, out of uh, University of Texas, San Antonio. I like I, I like the idea. Athletic would be another guy there again, though. It, this would be a move that would kind of to help push competition in the running back room. But when you're drafting a running back that late, sometimes they work out. If they don't, it didn't hurt you that bad. But this is also why I think they need to sign a veteran running back to say, hey, this person's more so fighting for the third running back job, not the second running back job. Because you want to have, I think, a reliable backup for Najee Harris when he needs to take a breather, when you need to get him some rest, and then so that he can come out on key downs and win them for you. Finally, finishing things out, Christopher Allen, edge rusher, Alabama. Never can have enough edge rushers. If he works out, great. If not, oh well, seventh round pick. But a great pick here, and this was a pick that actually really helped your Robert when you were playing Mock Draft Monday, and that's Bo Melton. Now, if you've heard me talk about Bo Melton, it's because I watched him and I loved him in the senior bowl. Returner guy that can kind of replace Ray Ray McLeod and what did he was doing what he was doing for the Steelers. Quick twitch. Really quick in the in, in an open space, hard working athlete. I've also talked to his former college coach, wide receiver coach, Tyquan Underwood, who now is the wide receiver coach at the University of Pittsburgh. He has all, nothing but great things to say about, about about Bo Melton as far as a hard worker, developing different skills, and that's what you want out of a seventh round pick. A guy who's going to come in, he's not going to take anything for granted. He's going to work hard, and that's what you want to see for someone develop into a potential, hey, you know what? Maybe he's a slot guy in the future. Maybe he's a guy that develops into being a solid depth receiver for you. But you get two guys like him and Mechie and add him to the mix there and maybe sign another uh, free agent You know, after, after the draft. You'll be back to having a full complement of receivers so you can say, hey, you know, maybe no one's a superstar here, but maybe someone becomes one over time and at least starts to set up the future of what the Steelers wide receiver position will look like. Well, that congratulations again to Robert Cernowski for your Mock Draft Monday win. Thank you to all those who participated in Mock Draft Monday. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. We thank everybody who participates in, in us and listens to us and watches us. We thank you so much. Again, I'm in a different place right now. I'll be back home tomorrow, and I'll be recording and getting things ready to go for the Tuesday episode of the Locked On Steelers podcast. But we hope you enjoyed the Monday episode. Remember, if you're listening to this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Odyssey, be sure be sure to rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts and leave a positive comment when you both you do both at the same time you get a special shout at the end of the show if you're watching us on youtube hit the like button on this video hit the subscribe button to our youtube channel and hey share our show let people know hey this is where you can come for legitimate Steelers talk all all day all day and 
Monday through Friday, giving you updates all, all season long. And remember, if you're following our YouTube channel, you'll get our breaking news updates that we, that we release when a big signing happens, big trade, any big news involving your Pittsburgh Steelers. Thanks again for checking us out. I'm Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Back on your screens and in your ears on Tuesday. Thank you.